Hey guys, it's Rocco here and welcome back to another Lunar Classic podcast. In today's podcast, guys, we talk about the global markets and Bitcoin breaking out into new all-time highs. We are not experts on global war, but we do share with you our opinion because it's really important to see what's happening in the global market, especially with the US elections. That has a big impact on crypto markets and the financial markets. We're seeing with Trump's win percentage going up, Bitcoin breaking out into new all-time highs. If we can get our stuff together with a USDC repeg, some good meme coins, Eurus protocol, Terra. There's lots of updates on Terra, guys. The Terra price has gone up 2x, mainly due to the airdrop for Selenium, which is going to be a mirror protocol for Synthetics protocol, which is coming to Luna Classic. So lots of bullish stuff, guys. We also touch on the coin market cap links, steering group, and lots of other cool stuff. So make sure you watch this whole video, guys. We do this weekly podcast to share with you everything that you need to know. If you want to listen to it whilst you're in the gym, going for a run or working from home, you can find out all the details. I do still make a weekly YouTube video for 10 minutes to share with you the high level stuff, what's going on, everything that you need to know. This is for the Luna Classic lovers. If you love the uh, love. Luna Classic, want to see Luna Classic succeed in a bull market, want to find out what's happening inside the ecosystem, listen to these spaces. I'll play the spaces, guys, and I'll catch you guys later. There's some good content coming out on liquid staking as well, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification button. Enjoy the podcast, guys. I'll see you with some more amazing content in the next few days. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing very well. NL69, how are you doing, mate? I'm doing fine, Rocco. I'm still on the road. I'm getting home, but I didn't want to be late. So uh, today I'm talking from my car. <laughs> You're driving and doing these places. I've invited uh, Rexy and um, DJ Trev uh, to come and talk as well. I think DJ Trev said he'll be a bit late. Awesome. So it's going to be an interesting space. Is my uh, is the background noise loud? Because it's hard to like mute myself all the time in the car. Is it okay like this? Or? Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, I can I can hear you well. Okay, okay. Maybe let's wait for him to to come. When will you? Uh, Rex when is will here. You? I see. Hi, Rex. Yeah, Rex is here. I'm home in like five minutes, so it will be all right. Ah, uh, okay, that's fine. Then I can I can blabber on for five minutes. <laughs> Just let Rexy talk. No offense, Rexy. <laughs> <laughs> Rexy will take will be longer than five minutes. Okay, Rexy, how you doing? Sounds like I'm building up a reputation here, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know if it's a compliment or a negative thing. It could be a compliment as well. <laughs> uh, one of your lecture they used to uh, the lectures used to go on for quite some time. I could tell you, but um, now I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. It's a uh, I've had a couple of days just easing off a little bit from um, kind of from being online and that kind of thing. And uh, it's something I've not, you know, done much of. And uh, and last night it was the first time I've been out for a few kind of beers in a pub, which is a normal Englishman type of thing, isn't it? Since the crash in May 22. So uh, there you go. That's something. What? Kind of... Are you being... Is that the truth? That's crazy. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's first, yeah, first kind of social time i've had off from this i've just been so busy all that time wow that's crazy i i've had lots of holidays i've traveled the world in that time now i respect that dedication to loon community yeah it's uh i think it is well needed to be fair i mean you just i've got a fair amount of kind of stamina and i'm pretty kind of robust but you know every now and again i think you've just got to you just got to relax a little bit, haven't you? And uh, I've had a few days with uh, my mate Stan as well. And Stan's my chainsaw. Uh, so I've been kind of logging up for the winter as well. And I find that quite, uh, you know, quite kind of calming as well. Hard work's really good for the soul. Definitely, Rex. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to have some time off. I, I try to balance that out. Like on weekends, I just switch my phone off. Or like if I spend time with someone, um, I try to switch off from crypto. Uh, I did have a burnout before, so I think it's really important to to have a balance. Um, but it's also important to like lock in as well. I think I've not been as active as I was in trading before. I, I think I've told stories before. I used to stream on Facebook for like three, four hours, like wake up middle of the middle of the night to trade. Um, so I think it's a balance. 
I don't know what the right answer is. I was a lot more successful when I was locked in, 20 hours a day, no sleep. Um, now I'm more relaxed. I think if you want to hustle, be tired, then you have more information, you're more locked in, um, you achieve more, but then it also burns you out. So I think it's time to like do locked in and really work hard and and then also take some time off. I think that's probably the best way to approach it. Yeah, well, if you want to complete a marathon, you've got to make it to the end, haven't you? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if that means you've got to have a bit of a rest here and there to make sure you get over the line, well, that's where you've got to do, haven't you? Um, sprinters aren't very good at marathons, are they? No, I agree. Uh, DJ's here. Can you talk now, DJ, or a bit later? Uh, no, I can chit-chat a little bit. I'm in my car, too. <laughs> um, I couldn't hear you, DJ. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? It's not very clear. Rexy, can you hear me? He's in the car. Yeah, I can hear he he's in the car. Uh, actually, what we've got is we've got DJ and we've got LL69. They're, but they're both in the same my car. Spaces, but actually sat next to each other. Yeah, uh, uh, hello. <laughs> so uh, you guys can hear me, but Rocco can't. Is that what's up? Well, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me, Rocco? I can hear you fine too. Uh, for me, everything fine. Rocco, uh -oh. can you hear DJ or not? I think Rock Rocco's rocking. Okay, I can hear you now, DJ. I think yeah, it was me. Um, I couldn't hear anyone for for a couple of minutes. Okay, I was gonna say I didn't do anything different. Um, yeah, I'm in my car too, but no, me and LL are not in the same car. <laughs> cool. Um, well, we can start the spaces. So usually I do an intro on Bitcoin and the markets, and um, and then we talk about Luna Classic, and then we talk to our hosts, speakers, Rexy, LL, DJ, and then we can bring a few guests on as well. We can see Tech, David, um, if you, and any other project. So if you guys want to come up and ask questions, uh, we can talk about that later. So uh, in terms of markets, I guess Bitcoin hasn't done anything. Uh, we rallied into the key uh, resistance level about 69, 70K. That's the month highest monthly uh, near around the highest monthly and weekly closes. Uh, we rallied into that this week. It's just been sideways. Not much has happened. I think from the chart I shared, 69.2. If we start breaking back above there, that's also the um, highs in November 2021. I think that we're going to see a big expansion. Ideally, I'd like to see that happen after the elections. Um, from a technical point of view, there's just going to be a lot less drama, stock markets hitting the all-time highs. Uh, I think we're going to see Bitcoin rally into 100k and, and a lot of the meme coins and especially for Luna Classic as well, Jewish, uh, Terra and lots of other coins that we're going to see bullish action if that happens. If we see a sell-off into 58k, 60k, I think that bullish scenario might take longer. We might get a bigger pullback. There's lots of other things that's happening. Uh, again, I don't want to talk too much about the political stuff that's happening um obviously israel retaliated if you can say or aggress uh, did aggression whichever side of the uh, boat you're on which team whichever team you're on um iran i think Khamenei um said he's going to be um responding to iraq's attack so uh, iraq's israel's attack so i don't know what type of attack is going to be if it goes on to like a full-born war and like it's a wider middle east um issue um other players get dragged into it then yeah bitcoin and crypto market everything's going to sell off so let's see what happens for now i'm leaning bullish as long as we're holding 60k that's the chart that i shared uh, i'm going to lean bullish try to buy dips on coins like buy terra jurish lunk uh, other meme coins cat with hat um and and just try and trade it but for now it's just chopping i i'd in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I think we go sideways for now. After election, let's see if we can break out. DJ, you've got your hand up. Do you want to jump in now? No, I, yeah, I wanted to ask a question about what you're talking about, really, because um, you mentioned the election. So uh, I know that we Americans tend to think that, like, the whole world kind of revolves around us. Um, but how much, and I think that we, we're pretty much thinking, listen, Kamala wins, eh. You know what I mean? I don't know. People got different ideas about that. But if Trump wins, uh, it's probably bullish for the market. He's talked a lot about crypto. He was at the Bitcoin um, shindig there. Uh, so I want to know from you guys who are all over the place, how does the rest of the world view it? Are you guys watching this election the same way we are and feeling that this election is going to affect 
Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market um, as much as we hey, do? I can speak for myself. LL and Rexy can share their thoughts. So for me, yes. If you're trading crypto, trading Forex markets, whatever US does, it impacts everyone. If you look at it from a European point of view, uh, you can probably count it in one hand when we've gone against the U.S. Um, whatever any position U.S. have had, Afghanistan war, Iraq war, now with uh, supplying weapons to Israel, whatever U.S. does, we, we do it. I don't think U.K. is ever, or the major decisions, we've done anything against America. So whatever happens in America, you know, there's a saying in trading is like, if America sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. So it re it's really important what happens to, you know, dollar runs, the, the when priced in oil has a huge impact on the whole world economy. Um, so yeah, it has a massive impact. If Kamala wins, I think we might get a bigger dip. Crypto probably won't be as bullish. I don't think she'll do too much drastic. If Trump becomes president, it's obviously a lot more bullish for, for Bitcoin, crypto uh, than if Kamala wins. But um, I think the key thing is the, the wider stability. And like, if we go into a full blown war in, you know, Taiwan, in America, and uh, sorry, in, in the Middle East, if Russia, Ukraine gets worse, then I think it's gonna, we, we're gonna feel the impact. But yeah, from election point of view, from trading point of view, especially, and, and I think in general as well, Europeans and, and British people, we, we follow the US elections closely. Jewish? Have you got your hand up? Okay, um, it might be by mistake. But yeah, so yeah, uh, so that's sort of Bitcoin crypto overall. In terms of Luna Classic, it's just going sideways. I think the key thing is the big burn that's happening. Um, I know it's. Have you got your hand up again, LL69? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, somehow the button didn't work. I, I apologize. So. Um... But the, you, you asked about the US thing, you know, the elections and uh, stuff. Um, I think Germany is pretty much the same, if not worse than the UK. We always do whatever America does. Um, but I have a feeling like like there are not many eyes on China. They just started to do like massive quant uh, quantitative like easing, like uh, US did and Europe did uh, in the past. And I saw some of their stocks uh, are like pumping again. Um, and they're flooding the market with money. So I don't know if that's like going to have some effect. Um, and yeah, the Israel uh, Iran stuff. I don't want to comment on it publicly because I've my like my own views, and many people don't share them uh, for obvious reasons. So um, yeah, I just hope it's uh, going to go well uh, and not uh, affect our bags too much. Um, I don't know, man. The elections in the U.S. I think it's important for the markets, but at the end, like I don't know if it would matter that much. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think probably Trump would be a little bit uh, better. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've, I'm not a huge fan of that guy, you know, but if it was Sulaili for my crypto bags, I think it would be better if he wins. So, yeah. Yeah, historically, after elections, whoever it is, the market usually does well. Um, it's just uncertainty goes away. So whether it's Kamala, we might get less of a pump. Um, if it's Trump, we'll probably get more of a pump. Um, but yeah, if as long as we keep printing money, you can see the stock market history, apart from like three, four times when it crashed during like the 2007, the 9-11 stuff, stock market is up only like if you want to make money long term, and even if you are in crypto, just buy the US stock market. You can delve in a bit into China, UK, some defense companies, and, and try to play the trend. But if you're if you're busy with work or you know even just busy with crypto, just still some put some money into the US stock market because it's just up only. Uh, Rexy. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? It's, um, I'll probably finish. I guess what I'm, my kind of response with a question to DJ Trev in terms of uh, kind of how how was the media kind of portraying both candidates in in America because obviously the rest of the world doesn't maybe see um, how it's how it's um, you know how their arguments are presented, kind of domestically, if you like. But uh, I guess from my point of view, I don't know. It's, it's a pretty cool question, isn't it? It's a, on the face of it, it seems that Donald Trump is more crypto friendly. Um, however, he seems to be a bit of a wild card as well. 
the other side of it is is that in the russia ukrainian war it kind of it feels to me that trump is less likely to carry on providing support to ukraine and i think if russia ends up defeating ukraine and then occupying their territory i think that'll have a massive impact on the on europe um and i think that'll drive a lot of the economies and the investors to um arm up you know with worries of being a, a wider kind of conflict and it uh, escalating across europe so for me if kamala is the one that's going to support ukraine more and hopefully just you know along with kind of europe and and other kind of people other countries in the world and just help defend ukraine to the point that russia just thinks you know what we'll we'll, we'll call it a day and just say our special operation as a term it is over and then there might be a kind of peace there ukraine you know hopefully will be able to recover all its territory that was lost and you know and russia will maybe think you know this re i don't know reconquering imperialistic kind of approach we seem to have we'll kind of call it a day you know and um so yeah so i know that's not a straightforward kind of answer but ukraine falling i think would have a big impact on crypto than what trump winning would that's my kind of view yeah i mean i i said to it i don't know if i sp spoke to you about this rexy about like i've been working with someone to help with my twitter like write threads and we're writing a thread on like the bricks and the impact of that if you look at how um Russia hasn't really been isolated from what America and the West wanted. China is still buying from them. India is still buying from them. Um, and I think I can't remember the exact percentage, um, the thread the guy wrote for me, he sent me. I think it's only gone down like 35, 40 percent. So it's not really impact Russia that much. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if, if what's a good thing if Russia takes over and is it going to be worse for us or not? But um, with what's happening with BRICS and um, the Western powers and the, their impact on the wider world um, could be diminishing. But yeah, I don't want to make this into a war space. I'm not a war expert. I just try to talk general crypto and Bitcoin price uh, before the spaces start. Um, I just like, like, like everyone else, I think we're curious about what's happening in our world and the impact to us. Um, yeah, I don't, unless you guys want to add anything else, maybe we move on to Luna Classic. Okay, I would I would just be interested in uh, you know kind of DJ's uh, kind of summary there of how Kamala and um, Trump are kind of represented um, domestically within America. Well, I'll I'll keep it short because I agree with uh, Rocco. We sh you know I don't really want to make this into a big political thing, but um, so from my perspective. It's kind of difficult and it really depends on what news organization you're listening to. Um, because everybody's very biased, but the general, I think, consensus is that Kamala is pretty much just not for crypto. I think if we see, and I'm not advocating for either uh, either candidate, I'm just saying what we kind of see. Um, in general, I think if we see Kamala Harris, we see Gary Gensler keep his job or maybe even be advanced to something where he can have even more impact. Um, we see Elizabeth Warren, who is actually my state representative um, and is extremely, extremely against crypto. Uh, we see her continue her um, war against it uh, and possibly, again, she's looking to get on some financial whatever committee. Uh, so I think that we see a couple appointments made that really would not look good for crypto. I don't even think Kamala owns any crypto. Um, she has only had things to say about it after Trump said something about it. Uh, Trump, on the other hand, obviously people have a, a much different feeling about the way things would go if he were in there. And as far as the country goes right now, what we're seeing is that it's 50-50. That's according to the polls. That's according to the news organizations. Um, and I don't know that you can trust any of it. So, uh... I, all I can tell you is what I see, and I'll end it with this. And I think I put a tweet out about this not long ago. 
just riding through Massachusetts, which is a very, very democratic state always, I can tell you I probably see, and this is odd to me, probably 20 Trump signs, lawn signs, to every one Kamala sign that I see. The conversations that we hear going on around us when we're in restaurants or anywhere are usually about, are usually pro-Trump. Um, I would be surprised if he didn't take the, the election. Uh, but if you were in a different part of the country, you might get a totally different answer. And that's pretty much uh, where I'll have to leave it. Thanks, JJ. I think the prediction markets are saying uh, Trump is ahead now. I think 56% last time I checked. But yeah, it's it's still quite close. So going back to Luna Classic, I also just write down a few notes um, to give you an introduction of my thoughts on what's happened this week. Uh, there was two proposals for coin market cap. Uh, Vegas, Rexy, and K is it not KRAX Tech uh, gave you some update last spaces. Um, the two proposals that was up, Vegas's proposal, or I say Vegas's proposal, but having the Telegram link to uh, that uh, the, the telegram group that was initially updated i don't want to call it vegas's group um that uh proposal didn't pass and um, at the moment we don't have coin market cap data um information on there the proposal to hand over the coin market cap and uh, listing information to all nodes has passed but i haven't got a confirmation that it has it is tfo has handed over the information um to uh, to um, all nodes yet. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys know any more, but that was my understanding. There is a risk, I think, that we might not have the information on coin market cap. Um, might take a long time, um, which is what I was worried about. I think what myself, LO, and Rexy said it'd be best to just have what information we already had on there. And after governance, if we want to change it in the future, we can. So. I guess not too good news if anyone knows anything more. Do you guys want to jump on and add anything to that? I really wish I had an open the door. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought she had bumped into it. Oh, you screwed her all up. Oh. Bit of domestic bliss there from DJ. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that's what um, happens when you that's what happens when you're holding the phone in your hand and you're trying to let your dog in the house. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um I think uh, I think with regards to TFL handing over, uh, if you like, email addresses to all nodes, my personal view is I don't know what the email address is. So if the email is a company e email address on a server that TFL own, well, they're not going to be able to hand over an email address, are they? You know, it's, and they're unlikely to have a Gmail address or something random like that. So I don't. So if we're expecting a specific email address to be hung, handed over, I, I, I can't see that happening. Now, whether TFL would actually say, OK, we're going to liaise with all nodes and all nodes can present another email address, which we will then negotiate with CMC to say um, this new email address now becomes the one that you can refer to. You know that the, if there's some coordination like that, that that might be possible. But uh, yeah, it's. I think we'd have just been better off just keeping what tech had put in there, and you know, then spending months and months discussing it within the community, and you know, coming up with separate or, or maybe kind of you know revised kind of um, social media links. Then, but um, anyway, that uh, that ship's floated, isn't it? Yeah, I said that as well on a on a tweet. Again, I tried to be neutral in the community, but I said it'd be best to have a have a have one link to a Lunk website than to nothing or to Luna um, two point website. So it's a shame. Again, I don't want to have a go with the person that did all this stuff because Ella and myself might be going on the spaces to talk about Juris. But um, yeah, hopefully the person that took the lead to take it off. Um, is working in the background to to make sure there is links updated on on coin market cap as, as soon as possible. I mean, there's not too much time left before tier four shuts down. So that was the main topic. If tech or someone else or Vegas comes on later on, we can go into a bit more detail. The next thing is the big thing, I guess, is the TFL uh, LFG Chateau Bridge burns. So potentially, not potentially, we we know that's a confirmation. But 250 billion AUNC and 176 million USTC will be burnt. 
burning um, assets that are you know buying back, back buying back and burning, which is what Rexy and Terra Casino is doing for Cat with Hat, doesn't really impact the price. But it's just the thought of it. Like myself and other Twitter influencers are going to be shilling it. Big burns are coming. Um, if Bitcoin breaks out, I guess we could have more money flowing into it just on that hype. I think it's also a good time for the USCC repeg stuff to happen. Um, I know the 7th of November, I think, is the date when the first white paper is released from Ceramic Team. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I know there's been some um, concerns of how the, the Ceramic Team is and the, the the experience that they have. But I, I'll judge the white paper when it comes. I'll speak to Redline and, and more technical people and, and try to make my own, own conclusions. It'd be a good time, I think, with those burns happening to have a repeg hype going on. So that's the big news. Um, the Lunar Classic Steering Committee. Um, shall we talk about that, DJ, now? I mean, we could. Um, that'll that'll probably be another really brief uh, conversation. Um, did you have a specific question? Or? Yeah, just, I guess, I've, I've read your post. Maybe just give a quick intro of people that are here. Um, and then uh, myself, LL, or Rexy, can give some feedback. And if anyone wants to come up and ask any questions, they can. Yeah, um, so the basic idea, uh, and this is something that Pink Unicorn and myself had um, kind of collaborated a little bit on, uh, was uh, that uh, the steering committee or advisory board essentially um, would work toward trying to get everyone working together together. Um, uh, you know, you know, we had tossed around whether they would put together some sort of roadmap or something like that. It really, it really hasn't come together as like an official proposal yet, as far as exactly the way this would go. But again, the general idea is that they would, you know, have some sort of idea with all the different proposals and all the different ideas and all the different developing that's going on and that has been going on, but hasn't necessarily all worked together and some of it actually working against each other. Um, they would be able to give an uh, kind of an official, unofficial uh, summary and, and recommendation of what might be, in their expert opinion, uh, uh, assuming that we would elect people who were capable of doing that, um, in their expert opinion, the best way that we should actually go and then work with the different factions, the different teams to try and put everyone together on the same page and heading in one direction as opposed to uh, kind of the kind of the bit of a circle jerk that we've been dealing with for the last couple of years. Um, I myself, uh, you know, I, I kind of put the idea out there, I've put the idea out there for the last two years a few times. Um, it's not like anybody's necessarily leading it. I put it out there to see what the community thinks about it. Anyone who wants to kind of move on it or, or continue on the way that we've uh, for what we've put out there um, is kind of welcome to do so. It has to be a community thing. Um, and uh, I, 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 I've been bouncing back and forth because I've been talking to a lot of people about it. Um, not only community members who, by and large, constantly kind of love the idea. I think they're all sick to death of the immense and the bickering and the back and forth kind of stuff too. But when I talk to more validator, developer kind of type, um, you know, there's a little more pushback and some of it is actually uh, legitimate pushback. And so I've gone back and forth. I, the, some of the biggest pushback that I get, you know, like from Strath and some other people is that, well, it might be a good idea, but you will never get all of these, all of these guys to agree to work together on one thing, everybody kind of work wants to work on their own thing and go in their direction. Um, I've been optimistic and said and said no. I, I believe that they actually would for the greater good because they say that they want to work for the chain and for the community. So I think that if we had you know some sort of team in place to try to help keep everyone focused, I think everybody would jump in and and try to help out with that. And then I have my moments where I'm like, no, I think that they're right. These guys will never get their act together. They'll never work together. Everybody wants to be the top dog. Everybody wants to be the hero. Um, and so myself personally, I think it's a great idea. Whether it could work or not, I'm really not sure. 
And that's uh, that's kind of as far as we've taken it so far. We're still trying to figure out how exactly to position it. But, you know, everybody's got five different ideas on how to do it. So it's tough. OK, I mean, my thoughts is I think we've, we've been doing what we're doing for now, for a long time and it hasn't. I wouldn't say we've had a big success with anything yet. Um, hopefully, with the repack stuff, with Terraport, with Jewish Protocol, we, we achieved something. Um, so I'm happy to try it. When I've read about it, I was like, yeah, if we can find a good leader to give us some direction and people can work together, I'd, I'd support it. Um, we've seen other communities that have success. They have like a leading group or leading person. I know we want decentralization, but even how Luna was successful initially. And if you look at other projects, there's like someone like a go-to person, a go-to group that is delivering. So um, it's something that I think we should give it a go. If it works, great. If not, I mean, we've we've talked about it for so long. What's the harm in doing now? More like a guy who tries to try stuff whether it's with meme coins whether it's with trading or just in real life try stuff if it doesn't work change course um so i i supported that action even though i had concerns about that leading group that leading team that leading person um i would i would support it hello 69 your thoughts on it um <laughs> that's a tough one for me because uh i actually like the idea in general um i think having some sort of Steering committee is great. I would even go further, say like we need some sort of legal entity behind it, um, some structure. But at the same time, I did I disagreed with some of the stuff that DJ suggested, where um, he said that community members should not be uh, not community members, but the members of the committee should not be voted in by governance. I think that's like big mistake, and uh, that the entity should be on chain somehow. Like um, I suggested some of ways to make it happen um, and like one problem I have with a lot of people like arguing for the committee which I make like I'm for the committee in general I'm just not for uh, disconnecting the, the members inside of it from governance um, and the reason being is um, I think you need legitimacy of that group you know if it's supposed to represent Terra Classic group and DL1 um, and steer them then they need to be legitimate. And legitimate to me means that the governance, which is like the authority on the chain right now, um, it um, should basically um, be like, I understand that some people are like saying, okay, it should be, you know, like validators are not voting in favor of community. Um, or like, bad data are bad or disagreeing you know like but at the end of the day that's us that's a governance model that's how the chain works it's like the same as it's it's very similar to to how uh, stocks work you know when you have like uh, stakeholder meetings or shareholder meetings and um, like the authority on chain is governance and if you like to me it sounds a little bit like bypassing governance and i don't like it um, and i don't think it's like why should anybody listen to it why should any validator or developer or community member listen to a group of people that's not elected by governance at the end because that's what we agreed on even the cnc stuff everybody agrees on hey was not governance uh, approved so we should go back and ask governance but we want to elect people in without asking governance so to me it doesn't make much sense and i think one of the arguments um like it goes back to hey we should let the community vote but i disagree with fundamentally with the fact with saying that um, validators are against community or not part of the community. Validate is also part of the community, big part, same as developers and delegators. And if you say delegators are not voting in our favor and they're staking with the wrong guys, um, I get that. I would agree when I see like Jesus is Lord having so much voting power on chain and some others. Um, it sucks, it hurts to see it, but at the end of the day, that's what people decide to do. You know, They decide to delegate with them, doesn't give us the right to say oh we don't like it so we put our own people in place with some other voting mechanism that's just my idea that's just my my only criticism right now with the idea okay we'll go to dj and then uh, we'll get Rex rex's feedback yeah so um yeah yeah ll and i have talked about this quite a bit and and i actually really appreciate the feedback um even when the feedback is not necessarily 100% back in what I'm saying, but um, I, I take the point and I and I love the point. 
So the counterpoint to it is that we have had issues with validators um, having like just crazy amounts of voting power. Um, like take JIL since that was brought up, okay? Uh, whether his voting power comes from actual delegators or self-delegating or whatever there it is, uh, my idea was that if everyone was voted in via governance, JIL, for instance, not saying this is good or bad, I'm just saying, could basically uh, nominate himself and vote for himself with his eight different uh, validators that he has and all of his voting power and basically appoint himself. Um, which, you know, it could happen with any number of validators who have large voting power. And then we start dealing with the situation where we're talking about popularity as opposed to who's actually qualified and who would be the best people. So um, that's an issue, but I do understand what LL is saying. I mean, there is legitimacy that comes from being elected in via governance. So I don't know if you saw this, LL, but I did reply to that, and I had an idea, um, and I don't know if this is a good a compromise or not, but I had suggested originally that we don't use governance to vote people in, that we find some other means. I don't care if it's like something on, like Twitter has a bunch of like polling kind of things, or if someone knows of something else that's more secure or whatever, I, I'm all for it. Um, and that's the way that I wanted to do it originally. But if, I'm thinking like this, if we did that, okay, and yes, validators are community members, but I think the only fair way to do it where we're not using, you know, crazy amounts of voting power to appoint people is that one person, one vote. So a validator is a community member, but, you know, each validator should have like a vote, right? So if we, if we found a way through, you know, again, Twitter polls or any other way that somebody knows of to actually hold the election and vote people in, but then... Those people needed to, the whoever won the election, right? For whatever different positions we say need to be filled, which again we haven't figured out yet. Um, but then those people who are elected need to be ratified through governance. So in other words, we hold the election, and you know the the you know there are two two people that are elected for this position, two people that are elected for that position, whatever, whatever. And then we go to governance and we say, okay, can we appoint these people through governance? to this committee and then let governance have its say one way or the other. Now, the idea behind that is we're letting governance do it, but again, hopefully, and it's kind of a trust me, bro, but the thing is I'm hoping that if we see that, listen, this is who the community voted for, this is who they want, we would hope that even through governance, govern governance would just go ahead and ratify it. Now. I absolutely, under, it also gives governance the opportunity. Let's say somebody said, okay, well, for L1 stuff, we want DJ Trev, right? That would be the most idiotic thing in the world. But if, you know, if I got the popular vote, governance would have the ability to say, no, Trev has no business on this thing at all. Uh, you guys have got to pick somebody else. So that was kind of my compromise. And again, I, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. Um, but yeah, that's that. Uh, but DJ, one point. So, so let me just take Kujira as an example because I know their 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 um, their Senate idea failed and stuff. But the voting mechanism was really good. What they had, it's basically everybody in the community can suggest somebody. It doesn't matter. Um, everybody can can put themselves up for vote, and then you have like a system where many people. That there are like I think they had nine seats. So it was built into governance. You had a vote. You know, not text proposal or whatever. It was really on chain governance stuff where you uh, basically um, get elected with your wallet. So then you get X, like it's on chain verified that it's you and whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I disagree that anybody who's not staking should be voting. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a community member and you're super engaged and whatever, you should be able to get elected into the Senate, let's say your committee or whatever you want to call it. But I don't think that anybody should have the, the, the right to vote if you're not staked, because it's a proof of stake chain. That's how the, if you like it or not, if it's unfair or not, if uh, the wrong people are right now in the power or not, it doesn't matter. But the mechanism, what we all agreed on is that we have proof of stake and it's in the name, proof of stake. If you're staked, you have a vote. If you're not staked, 
You know, you can be uh, Mother Teresa, it doesn't matter. You have no say in governments. And it doesn't matter if you, like to me, the main community is like, like obviously you have community, but the main voters, the main people should be the ones who are staked. Those should have to stay. And a counter argument for, you know, um, Jesus is Lord, example. The steering committee gets into place and it's full of professionals and they say we should just an example we should get rid of the burn tax maybe it's a stupid idea maybe it's a good idea but let's assume that those people make uh, they want to steer us in that way jesus is not going to obey you know he's going to veto it all the time if they want to make an upgrade he's going to veto it you know it doesn't make sense it has to be somebody who governance approved so that they are basically like forced more or less to follow what they say because they voted for it the moment where i'm not voting for something i can always say i can go with jurors well then and say no i don't respect these people they're not legitimate you know it doesn't matter if there was a government i didn't vote for them or my delegators didn't have a chance to vote for them and if you at the end of the day want to get them approved by governance there is already a working mechanism like kujira had this you can have like um independently uh put up people up for vote and then they get voted in in one big vote basically i'm not sure like i don't remember exactly how it worked but you i remember that there was a big vote and then uh, we had like i think 20 or 30 people appointed and at the end nine were voted in and i think that's like at least some sort of system where you could at, at the end of the day if jesus then doesn't obey you can say okay but this is like governance approved and everybody voted for it i don't necessarily agree that people who are like who feel they're part of the community because they're active on Twitter, but they have no stake, um, should be allowed to have a say because they're playing with other people's money, especially with those with the money of people that are staked. Those are the guys who like sacrifice uh, being able to buy and sell, um, stake their coins, lock them in, and like uh, basically keep the chain running more or less. You know, based off the way proof of stake works. So that's my counter argument. I, I agree with all of that. There's nothing there that you said that I would disagree with. Um, and it, uh, put it this way, any any fair way that we can find to elect the right people, and this is why we have the conversation, right? Because everybody gets to say, you know, hey, how about this idea? How about that idea? If Kajira has a system that worked and worked well and, it, you know, it was fair and equitable, then bravo you know uh, i i don't i really don't care the thing is something like this and we're we're kind of hung up on it a little bit and it's kind of an important thing but it's probably you know step number five and we're still on step number one like figuring out if we're even going to try to do this but what i like um is that we're having a conversation about how is the best way to do this as opposed to a while ago when I brought up stuff like this, we were having the conversation about how stupid an idea it was and it will, it'll never work, you know? So that, that everybody's trying to give ideas on the best way to get it done is a, is a net positive as far as I'm concerned. So I appreciate it. Thanks, DJ. I would even go further, you know, I like your idea. I would even say those people, they need access to funding, they need access to funds, but we cannot just elect people and let them do what they want and then they, there is no tie to governance you know like in the kujira model the only thing that i would like say is probably to your definition it was unfair because at the end of the day it was based on voting power if you had more voting power you could decide who's going to get elected um but to me that's like maybe to you it's unfair i know that david finds it unfair or not not right i think it's okay because that's how the, that's the way governance works at the end of the day um but like the other stuff was basically those people they got access to funds um through like there was a multi-sig and if you got elected um you could request community pool funds for certain things and then you actually had access to a multi-sig where the signees were people on the uh, senate so they were voted in by governance they were legitimate to you know in that way those people could start to form for example legal entity um actually do stuff with community pool funds that like we as a chain cannot do because we don't have central authority but at the same time it's not disconnected from governance if people fuck up there is a vote and you vote them out or abolish the whole thing if it's disconnected from governance you know then it's it's it, maybe it starts good initially and then it goes to shit and then you're just left with people who are basically gatekeeping and like uh you know they have like all the stuff um let's say in their possession, I think, that's the English term, 
and they don't want to give it back what are we going to do then it's impossible you know you're going to sue them we as a chain we cannot even like uh get the cmc stuff together and what if we appoint 10 people maybe they're super professional you know it doesn't matter but they could also be professional enough to to just do it for themselves and like fuck the chain and say like okay we just rip you guys off like this is my fear Good conversation, guys. Just to add to that, I think Twitter voting wouldn't be very good because, you know, you could have bots and other people voting. There needs to be another way to vote if you want to do it for delegated as well on top of um, rather than validators. Rexy, hey, can, I, can I have a moment just to uh, make one point? Uh, yeah, I, I know okay. that Rex, you've been waiting. That's to, fine, Kate. To you, can have a, you can go, Kate, Rex. Okay. Um, I just wanted to bring up that a... This kind of framework has been done a couple times already here in Lunk after the crash. Uh, the first time was in uh, Terra Rebels, but Terra Rebels was pretty much the only entity that was building on Terra Classic at the time. And the, the people that were on the steering committee had been elected into those positions. Some of them kind of, uh, I guess, fell into those positions because there wasn't exactly anybody else that was going to fill those positions. But then that caused a lot of issues on its own. And then the next time that something like this had actually happened was with um, Ed, with the, uh, I forget the name of it, it had the L1 TGF or uh, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But they- had, L1 task force. The, the what? It was the the L one L one task force with uh, Ed and Zara Dyer. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, that was a branch of it. So um, the a legal entity that they had, which was supposed to be like a nonprofit, they had a branch that had the L one team that they had brought on and say would hire from that. But they oversaw a lot of the chain type stuff, and a lot of people would say, okay, well, if the um, Ed's steering committee group we'll just call it that um because uh if i can find the name of it i will I, I will find it uh i just can't remember at the top of my head right now um so they there's people in the community that would say well if ed's group does not approve of what is going on then i don't want anything to do with it so then and that caused some gatekeeping there so we've already had two instances on Terra Classic where a steering committee framework has been done. Uh, both of them fell apart. Yeah, if, if I could respond to that, can I have two seconds, Rocco? Yes, CJ, go ahead, mate. So, um, yeah, I, I think what you're referring to, uh, K Rocks, is. Um, and I forget the acronym too, but was that the thing where they, they had they had money and they were deciding who to dole that money out to? Um, what basically you could apply for a, a grant? Was it a I don't know something about grants or something? Is that what you're talking about, uh, K Rock? Yes, but it was also like a steering committee. They had a board of people that were on it, and then they would. Um, it was either like grants. I think there was a part of it that had to do with uh, that, like four million dollars that uh, Alex had found a long time ago, and then people were trying to figure out where to put that money into it. Um, they were facilitating the L1 team that had like Zardar and uh, all the others that were uh, there. Have we just lost DJ? It's yeah, I think he yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know what happened. I kind of rugged it for a second. Um, yeah, that might have been it. Uh, I think the only thing that I would say about that um, is, yeah, I know what you're talking about, and I understand what you're talking about. We have tried this before, but the fact that we've tried it before kind of proves that it's something that people think that we need. And I think that timing is 
what's key here. Um, obviously, earlier on, you know, anything within the Terror Rebels, that was way up front, I mean, way at the beginning before the factions had really taken hold and, and really spun us in circles the way that they have for two years. That was a long time ago. And even this deal with, with Ed and the Terra Grants, whatever the hell that was, um, again, you know, that was a while ago. The, the reason that we're bringing it up again is because it's been two and a half years and we keep going in circles. And at this point, I think from what I see anyway in the community and what I hear from people is that they are just sick and tired of the back and forth, back and forth, not moving in one direction. They're tired of the price going down, down, down. These weren't really situations that we had back then. And so maybe those things didn't have the kind of support um, that they should have had because people weren't really paying the kind of attention to it that they are now. Uh, so timing wise, I think this is something that everyone has come, to, well, not everyone, but most people have come to the conclusion that we kind of need. So it might be the right time where actually everybody could get behind and actually support it. And if everybody like LL and, and Strath and all these people actually come together and say, well, you shouldn't do it that way. You should do it this way. And everybody puts their heads together as opposed to people just being, you know, planted in these positions and, hey, here we are, you know, um, then hopefully we could come up with something that would actually work this time. But like Rocco said, um, I think it was Rocco, Rocco Ella, one of you guys said earlier, uh, you know, we, 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 we try it because what's working, what's going on right now is not working. So if we give this a shot and we give it our best shot, uh, and if we find that it doesn't work, then, you know, we, we try something else. That's what Terra Classic keeps doing is trying things. But um, I, I think timing-wise right now, it's probably a good time to actually put something like this together. I would be completely open to the idea, even though I have some opposition to it, if there is full documentation and, say, a code of conduct of how this would and completely work. 100%. Okay, thanks, guys. Rexy, you want to comment on this uh, committee? Uh, it's an interesting one. Again, into it. so I kind of agree with a lot of what LLL69 said. Um, I think there need to be. I think there needs to be a discussion in terms of what is the point of the committee, um, what powers it would have, if any. Um, and I think there would always be that real that real issue around would anybody really follow what it kind of suggests? Um, I suppose in terms of like a, a political entity, it's near like a, an executive branch or like a cabinet that operates above kind of parliament, but anything that it suggests would maybe need to be ratified by the validators. But, I mean, you know, it's... I don't know if we would be able to agree on anybody being a representative there. And if there was a representative on the committee, would there be a hundred percent vote for that person? Cause if there wasn't a hundred percent vote for that person or them group of people, um, then you're always going to have kind of disagreement. I mean, yeah, I'll put it into context in terms of like with I guess Terra Vita and, and Terraport and things like that. Um, we've in terms of the feeling and the sentiment towards the terraport team following the hack bear in mind we've had a united nations security council document that says without a shadow of a doubt that it was an internal you know internal um kind of hack it was done by you know north korea um and you'd like to think the un security council would have a bit of an idea what they're talking about but there's still people within our chain that are you know kind of spreading snake oil in terms of saying that well it was an internal hack by the terror terraport team so when you've got people on the chain or validators on the chain that cannot recognize proof i just think it would be very difficult for a um a committee to be influential for the rest of the the rest of the chain and also you know it's from a decentralized point of view anybody can do anything they like with the chain in terms of building um 
I don't know. It's, it's a difficult one, but I do think there's, I do think there's risks from centralization if there's an entity that's got a legal foundation because it becomes a target. Um, however, I think there is an advantage in having maybe some representatives of the chain that are empowered to be able to speak on behalf of the chain in terms of being able to connect to um, other non terra classic entities, um, maybe like sexes and CMC and coin gecko and all this kind of thing. Um, but then they are then, you know, awarded them powers on the basis of validators um, kind of agreeing to it. Um, so, yeah, it's th there's pros and cons. I know there's, that's not a definitive answer kind of either way. Okay, uh, David's got his hand up. Also, one more comment from this, and then we'll move on to the next topic. David, your thoughts on the committee? Well, hi, Rocco. Hi, everybody. So, I wanted to comment on a couple of things that were told in the last hour or so. So, if you want to move to other topics and allow me to just uh, give some information about uh, CMC and other things that were discussed later, then I'm totally okay with that. I don't want to bl blow your flow. However, I like to comment on a couple of things that were said, not only the steering committee. Okay, if it's about something else, uh, we can come back to it after. Um... It's it's about all of those topics that, that were that were you know discussed. I've got some something to add in. Okay, go ahead. Couple, go ahead now, David. Go ahead. Go ahead now, because yeah, last so... time we cut you off. <laughs> go ahead now. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So I'll try to make it short, <laughs> uh, as short as possible. Yeah. So I wanted to touch on a couple of things. First thing is is DJ Trev question about about the politics and how we see USA. I just want to say I'm I am from Poland. And Poland is next to Ukraine. And I, last time I, I see my father-in-law, we were having a couple of drinks and, and discussion about politics started. And, you know, I, I am crypto guy, so I was pro-Trump. However, I don't follow other politics in, in general. And, I'm, and my father, you know, told me he was, and he was very far in love. He, he was very angry and very, you know, serious about this. He told me exactly what, what Rexy said, that, you know, uh, w we should all hope that Trump is not uh, elected because he will stop providing money for, for Ukraine. And then if Ukraine falls, guess who's next? And Poland, will, it will be not the first time when Poland will be in, will, you know, the greatest ever danger, right? So I just want to give you the understanding that it also, the perspective changes also uh, from the position where you are, not only in Europe, but in general, right? We are next to, to Ukraine next, and, and the war is right on our on our side, right? So this is just uh, the re something to say about the politics. Then about coin market cap and socials. While you were discussing this point, I just found out, and I think this is something new, that socials were updated. Now there are two socials: Twitter, which goes to Terra Money, and Re and and Reddit, which goes to Terra Luna. When pre after after uh, it was changed, there was completely zero for la zero links for like last two weeks. As far as I remember, uh, it was changed and was changed to zero. Then and now we've got two social links. So I think something changed. Maybe can anybody can 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 you know confirm on that? But by looks of it, there were some changes in a couple of days at least for those two links that were not there. So this is coin market cap socials and and also I found out. Something else about about coin market cap, which is yields. There's section yields, and right now it only shows Binance yield, uh, zero point forty eight percent of of yield. I guess it's Binance staking. So, it's, so the other thing that is very big disadvantage, it does not even show the APR that you get when you stake it on you know on chain. Uh, so the, not only socials are are working against us here, but also the yield section and everything else, right? And then I want to touch about, uh, you, you know, give you, give you a little bit a reminder that I've posted uh, a video uh, interview with with uh, Mr. Jeff Bezos on on, Terra, on, on, on Twitter, and I, I've I've uh, tagged him, um, nearly all of our leaders and everybody there just to listen because this is ten minutes about making decisions and uh, how to make decisions in prof professional world. And he, you know, one of the greatest entrepreneurs in the world tells us that compromise is not the way to go because it doesn't show the truth. It doesn't provide us the truth. 
and and war of attrition whoever just fights for longer is also not the way to go the way to go is to to agree and disagree but comply so we we don't agree on certain certain things but i i just will give you a try and you will try to give give me give the best answer if and if this doesn't work let's try my way and this is the only thing that we should really do here with the steering commun community uh, community sorry because this is the the other concept that Jeff Bezos is describing is two way door or one way door, and this and this uh, steering committee idea I guess is not one way door. It's probably two way door. Meaning if we go and it doesn't work, then we can revert it probably and it won't be as as you know devastating as for for example turning on market module right. So uh, we should at least try to do it uh, and then to see the see the results. Right. Um, but I just wanted to remind everybody: check the check the interview with Jeff Bezos. You know, this is this is knowledge that you get from the best from the best. How to make decisions in in situations like this. And last thing that I want to say is: I guess LL provided the answer how to build the steering committee, at least in a version when everything is on chain. If if uh, Luna 2 you know, managed to create a Phoenix derivative and it was based on some kind of other um, you know, framework, then let us just use Kujira's framework because it's, it was working or is still working, it's proven to work. So let's just copy this and try if you want to move, if you want to do everything uh, with the steering committee on chain and, and through code. So we, we've got the direct answer, right? So. We should really uh, check this, and I guess LL can send a lot of links and information when he when he get got those information from. Right, so certainly there is a cheat sheet <laughs> how to do it on chain, and it's, it's been done. So let's let's just think about this. Yeah, so this this were a couple of things I wanted to add in overall to the to the discussion. I don't want to interrupt you while we were uh, talking. Hopefully, though, some of those were were you know interesting for you thank you very much thanks David. it was very useful especially the comment um about poland because yeah we forget different people have different perspective um because my perspective from the uk and then i've got different background a friend who's got extended family in west bank so i mean i've got a different perspective as well so yeah thanks for sharing that personal experience the next topic i wanted to talk about is tax to gas and i think it's really best if we had um Strat or Frag. Is Frag back next week at all from his holiday? I think he said he is back on, I forgot, but one day next week he's back. I think mid or end next week, yes. Okay, so we'll try and get Frag on. Um, I'll try to give my um, simple understanding so we can read the post from Stratco for more understanding. So he's, he's proposed a new uh, way to do tax to gas, which is reverse change. Um, it will help uh, developers move over from other Cosmos chains because it reduces the the development um, uh, the developers having to do complex tax handling logic um, to to the contract for for the burn tax work that we've got and it it, it meant it's meant to automatically um, do the tax deduction. So if you send it the sender, it will just automatically do it. So when you're building on it uh, on Terra Classic or you're moving from other chains, it's just a lot less work. So that's my simple understanding. You can go read it. Um, he's also said that it's going to be backwards compatible. Um, so there shouldn't be any risks to doing this. And he's still testing it on some NFTs and sending some LUNC uh, transfers as well. So I mean, I'd I'd love to see it happen. Uh, we've had this tax to gas drama for a while, um, so finding a solution that works, um, which sounds even better, helping developers from other other chains and other projects and Cosmos to come and build on Luna Classic, um, is a positive. Have you guys got anything else to add to that? I think there were three people having their hand up, Rocco, maybe, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think, just, um, I think just quickly, I just clarified some things with the proposal with Strath um, earlier on today, um, because it can be a little bit, there can be a bit of misunderstanding in terms of how it's worded. However, it's it's kind of uh, giving him a, a successful kind of vote, if you like, or a positive vote, is to 
um, basically endorse him developing this approach a little bit further, doing some final testing so that it can get to the stage where it uh, replaces the, the previous kind of tax to gas um, strategy that was that was approved. Um, but yeah, it seems to be that the work he's done up to now is quite quite positive. Um, and yeah, and I think you know it's it's worth the worthy of kind of taking forward. Um, anything that can make it easy for developers to come on chain has got to be positive. Um, if we haven't got volume and we ain't got desire for people to kind of come here and to trade here as well, we're just never going to get that upwards demand um, in terms of price pressure. Um, well, that's certainly my opinion. Okay, thanks, Rexy, for adding that. Yes, uh, we, would, we will try and get Frag and Stratcore to explain it in more detail. I've just read what he's posted on Commonwealth and I, I made a note that I wanted to share with you guys. I think th those are the main L1 uh, things I want to discuss. Uh, then the next things we talk about is usually about Juris. So we've got LL69 um, and DJ Trevor, I guess Rexy as well. Um, LL69, do you want to share the latest on Juris? Um, well, yeah, I can share some stuff. I uh, Unfortunately, I didn't have time to watch DJ's uh, video yet because it was weekend and uh, I spent yesterday and today with my girlfriend. Uh, I was driving her to the to the train station, so I, that's why I was in the car when I was driving back um, when the space started. Um, I guess there's some good stuff going on with Juris. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, like, like all you guys know, some of the stuff is like still uh, being worked on. Um, Duncan and I have finished the Gitbook review. Um, I asked the uh, our lead dev, let's say, our unofficial lead dev friend of DJ to also review our changes uh, to see if it's uh, good or not. Um, he didn't have time to come back to us yet, I think. Um, but um, I'm pretty confident that we got it right this time. And uh, Solid Proof asked me, like, I asked Solid Proof to book a meeting next week. Um, so that's probably, I think, definitely going to happen. So we will have a kickoff meeting. We will review the whole um, thing again, um, basically kick off the, the, the review. So that Solid Proof is going to go through the whole Gitbook with us, um, write out specifications for all of the milestones. Um, and then we are talking to this uh, exchange. I said it's a big exchange. I still think it's big. Uh, some people were like talking about Binance, um, so it's definitely not Binance. Um, it's not that big yet. <laughs> um, I think it's not tier one, but uh, probably a big tier two one. Um, that daily volume is somewhere in the hundreds of millions, sometimes a couple billion dollars a day. So I think that counts as big, in my opinion. Um, they have fiat withdrawals and uh, deposits. That's also big, in my opinion. Um, and they confirmed that they are keen to work with us, that they want to list us. They already have a Terra Classic listing, so there is a trading pair with Terra Classic, but what they do not have is uh, L2 tokens from Terra Classic Network. And they said they uh, had initial plans to start um, allowing tokens from Terra Classic to be launched in somewhere in Q1 2025. So that's not end of the year, unfortunately. Um, so we're talking with them about possibilities on uh, how to make it happen quicker. And we're also talking about possible marketing deals. So we got a foot in the door, I think. Rocco is involved, so he can maybe also share some stuff if he wants to. Um, but I think it's all looking promising. Um, and I'm keen to start the development as soon as possible. But at the same time, I don't want to rush it because now we have solid proof on our side. They are really professionals and they advised us to do things a certain way. And even even if it means that it takes a little bit more time, then I'm, I'm I think it's worth just doing it the way they suggest. Um, so yeah, that's it from my side. Um, I might have missed something. I don't know. Maybe K and DJ and uh, Rocco can like help me out if I forgot something. Yeah, I think it was me. So I started the rumor. I think I did about tier one. Um, it's pretty, depends on how you look at it. It's probably not tier one, but yeah, if you or a bit of an alpha, you can go. Because there's so many exchanges, you probably won't be able to find out. But they had about two hundred, three hundred um, million in trading volume in the last twenty four hours. So it's not a really small one. So it's a good one. Um, and what we're looking for is more like a partnership that, you know, we help them and they help us promote us as well. Um, 
So we're not just wanting to list it on many exchanges, pay that to just get listed on Mexi and other stuff like that. It's, 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 we're looking more for like a partnership where they can help us with marketing and, and all, lots of other stuff as well. So I don't know if we can share more. Um, and it's not just one exchange. Obviously, we there's one that we're talking in a lot more detail, but if we can find a suitable partner, if you listen to these spaces, or if you know someone, if you've got a contact on a big exchange, do let us know. We're, we're happy to talk. We're happy to discuss. And we're looking more for like a partnership that we work with um, rather than just get paying to list it on different exchanges to have a quick price pump or, you know, the, some exchanges are quite... <laughs> let's say they have bad practices and you can look at a lot of coins that get listed on some exchanges and how the price performs we really want to avoid that so yeah we're, we're interested we're looking for partnership if you if you know someone do reach out to myself hello 69 uh, we can we can talk more dj trevin krx whilst we've sorry hello you want to go ahead and add anything um, yeah i actually forgot <laughs> forgot two two things that are pretty major actually for the project so the first one is um tomorrow i'm going to have some talks with my uh Let's say I just have an in real life uh, meeting to discuss some stuff uh, that would allow me to uh, more or less go full time or full time ish with jurors. Um, because I feel right now that uh, it's not doable part time anymore. Like uh, in the afternoon hours, um, there is shit lots of stuff, work to be done. Um, and I need like full focus on this. So that's uh, what I'm trying to figure out right now how to do it. Um, there is a community member who helped me out already uh, with a deal, which I'm going to make public. As always, everything is going to be transparent, but um, we actually made a deal already that would allow me to do so. So now I'm going to figure out the, um, like the funding is done already, um, but I need to figure out how to make the transition as soon as possible um, without stepping on anybody's feet in my real life. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is, um, next week I'm going to, hopefully next week, I'm going to be able to have the continue follow up meetings with David to get the branding right so that we can start to focus on UI UX to uh, continue the workshops. Uh, he's waiting for some input from my side. Um, and then, uh, I think there was one more thing, but it's not in my head right now. Maybe let's continue with David or K-Rox, Rexy, and then oh, DJ, sorry, DJ and K-Rox, and then uh, uh, maybe I say something later again. Cool. Yeah, so after this, if we have time, we can talk about Terra, Terraport as well. Maybe Rexy wants his separate spaces, but we can talk about Terraport, Cat with Hat, and then bring on some speakers. But DJ, Shilis, uh, Shilis um, Jewish mate. DJ? Okay, DJs, that's not bullish for Jewish. Uh, Kerax, maybe you can save, save uh, saying something bullish about Jewish now? Well, there may not be a lot of development that is happening at the forefront of what is going on, but uh, there's been a lot of work that is going on. Um, I guess underneath everything, I don't want to say the background because I just really don't like using the word uh, work in the background, but um, yeah, this is more like underneath. So a lot of organization that is internally um, documentation going through uh, and kind of collecting ideas and building out to have the most organized uh, execution for uh, jurists as we can. I mean, I don't know how bullish that is, but we're uh, we're doing the best. And uh, some of the team is talking about doing some ed educational content so people can understand um, certain basics about uh, wallets and what a lending protocol is and uh, different trading things like that. So um, hopefully that can be put together and be presented. And if anybody has any input on what they would potentially want to learn about, then uh, they can just let us know. Okay. I think we were looking for some alpha leak like tier one exchange listing, but no, uh, thanks for a professional answer. Okay, Rax, uh, David. I'm not it. going to uh, give any information. Uh, I'm just a paper pusher and uh, do other things. I, I'm not going to <laughs> sell that kind of information. It's not my place. 
<laughs> no, I mean, to be fair, I've spoken to LL69 and obviously some Discord. You're doing a great job and I think you really help with the, the way you organise stuff. It really helps uh, Juris and keeps LL69 in track. So thank you for all you do. David? Yeah, so I just wanted to comment on comment on what LL said. And I know that he was busy in, in a couple of days and and uh, my team and me, you know, ask for a couple of things in terms of branding and UXUI. However, just to let you know, LL, the work uh, the work did not stop, and and there are even concepts for key visual that already uh, I have done. So I hope for that next week we'll, we'll have next big meeting, not just workshop, but and you know, concepts, next big step that will get us one step closer. Uh, so yeah, I just want to tell you that, <laughs> and publicly, I guess that you know, uh, in the background, even though that's the, maybe not the best word, uh, things are going on. Even though some input really could have been, you know, handled a little bit earlier, but I guess you are you are working on that, so I don't have any any real complaints. Uh, one thing that just came to my mind, I think maybe this is something what you can really do right now is create some kind of uh, AI bot that will answer questions about about juries when there is no website, etc. Because this is what I did personally when I when we were preparing the workshops and working on on branding workshops. I I feeded uh, ChatGPT with eighty pages of juries and <laughs> I was able to use it very proficiently. Um, so maybe this is just an idea, a quick idea. There are there are chatbots and AIs that allow you to to create specific bots for a specific topic. And maybe this is something that people will be able to use for fun and to ask questions about juries. Um, and not not to reveal everything, so just just an idea, a quick one to to make something cool, um, cool tool. Yeah, it's a great idea, David. And I'm uh, thank you for the update. I think that's actually bullish that you guys kept working on it. I look forward to like have the big meeting. I hope that we can make it uh, mid end next week, uh, depending on what is going to happen tomorrow at my meeting in real life. Uh, so I will update you as soon as that is over. And then hopefully like things will go a lot quicker from here. Rexy, you've got your hand up. Rexy, you've got your hand up, mate. Can you hear me? Ah, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's something that's happened over this last week that's really bullish for Juris. Um, and I guess it's the it might be what you some people could term the uh, the elephant in the room if you like, but for Juris to actually be a success, it kind of needs some other things, and one of those things is coming to fruition. It seems um, according to the Terraport Launchpad, and that's this Selenium protocol, which is effectively Mirror. Um, so with Mirror, what it provided was synthetic assets. So. Essentially, this selenium is going to produce synthetic assets for the chain. I believe that's based on UT and um, USTC as well. Um, and in effect, what synthetic assets are, they're the equivalent of like stable coins, but they're, it's just the way that they're, they're produced. So once you've got those on chain, you've actually got something to lend and borrow against, which actually gives Juris far more of a use case and i think that's massively um bullish and that's been like i say promoted through the terraport, terraport launch pad at the minute um yeah so it's kind of helps create that trilogy of um applications that or replace that trilogy of applications that actually helped bring massive volume and success to luna version one in the in the first place which was anchor mirror um and i believe kind of astroport so that's replaced with Juris Protocol, um, Selenium, and Terraport. Yes, that was one of the topics, uh, Rexy, I was going to speak to you about. Uh, just to add a bit more alpha to that, um, we've seen Terra price go up um, about 50 60%. Again, not financial advice, but if you want to play with the airdrop, um, you can actually have, hold some Terra. I can't remember how much it is, Rex. You might know. I did move some Terra around earlier um, to airdrop from, I guess, uh, some Selenium. So if you want to get some airdrop for the launch pad, um, you can own some Terra. And there's some tasks on the Terraport website you can go try and do. Do you remember how much it was, Terra, that you had to hold, Rexy? Um 
you know, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's something like was it um was it ten thousand or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too much. Maybe I'll include it in my weekly uh, YouTube video. So I do obviously these spaces I've been posting on YouTube if you want to listen to as a podcast. Uh, and then I do like a short form ten minute of like a Luna Classic weekly video. Um I'll I'll record that tomorrow. So I'll try and find the information beforehand. Uh, DJ's join us. DJ, are you can you talk? Okay, he can't. So maybe I can share some bullish or fun stuff about um, Juris. I posted a chart about Juris, which got flagged by Twitter as adult content. Um, I don't know if that is bullish or bearish, but yeah, that's really strange. I did to retweet that. Um, it got tagged. I just commented on the spaces below. You can go check it. I don't know why, but it got tagged as an adult content. So maybe Jewish chart is so bullish, Twitter is uh, not allowing everyone to look at it and put in like an age-related content. Um, okay. What, what did you put on it? Just a Jewish chart, nothing else. You can check it. Um, let me see if I can pin it, actually. Um, what do you do? Kind of make it look like a penis or something? No, nothing. Uh, let me see if I can find. No, that. guys, it means it means that uh, Jewish chart is not suitable for work, actually, <laughs> um, because it's so great. Also, <laughs> let me see if I can tag it. There you go. I can tag it. I've tagged it on the spaces. So someone else said, well, I tweeted it, and then well, it's just the same tweet I've been doing since the Jewish crash. The Jewish cra crashed or Rakoff crashed with the judge. Um, when the judge Rakoff, we upset Judge Rakoff, and since then I've just been quote tweeting and updating the chart. Um, so yeah, it was just one of them, and then some, one of the guys just said, "I get age restriction for your Jewish posts." <laughs> so yeah, it's very strange. Okay, um, anything else, uh, Lunatic? Before we move on to the next topic. Um, no, let's have some mystery for now and uh, give the paper hands opportunity to sell off cheap before we <laughs> are able to announce better stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's good. We can accumulate a bit more. Um, I did miss the one part of, of my list that I make, uh, the, the, the price or technical analysis for uh, Luna Classic. I guess it's easier to do on a YouTube video because I can share a screen. But two key levels is uh, 0 0.301 level. Uh, we've been we've come to this level one, two, three, four, five times. Uh, first one in July. And we've just been sort of quailing uh, below it it's like one analogy is it's like a spring it's like you're pressing the spring down so if bitcoin breaks out we could hopefully get a big push up and i think we can get um a 34 plus 30 40 percent breakout so yeah that is a very key level so if you're one of those traders or dgen um futures leverage traders look at that level above that level you could look to buy into another key level in terms of support is a uh, 0.4074 and uh, that that's the support that we've held since august um, and we've made some lower highs so maybe if we sell off into that you could look for a trade but the key level i don't think will go there unless bitcoin breaks 60k is the not point and uh, this again you can go check the charts is the low that we made in first week of august is also the low of august last year so it's a massive level um if bitcoin breaks 60k we did spike it third of august and it was a good buying opportunity if luna classic gets to uh, that level if bitcoin breaks down uh, whether you bullish luna classic long term or not i think that would be a good zone to buy um jurist chart jurist chart uh, we had a big rally to t uh, 10 million uh, a massive difference from last time in may if you study charts or trade um or especially especially with lower cap meme coins when we see parabolic rise so jewish um rakov went from like 1 million to 10 million in like a less than a week when you see price pumps like that it's not sustainable and we see bigger pull pullbacks uh pump and dumps like it's low liquidity coin now we've seen a sustained move up so we've taken since august to now people are just buying we sell off we like pull back and then we push up so this is a lot more stronger trend um same as luna classic that level that i mentioned it'd be great to see jewish just consolidate here at around eight to ten million market cap and then hopefully with bitcoin luna classic and all the other market we can get a breakout so i think that's sort of a technical analysis on the spaces for jurists i do want to talk about terra and again i'm shilling my bags and affiliate to them again don't listen to me i'm just a twitter guy do your analysis and all that good stuff but yeah terra's moved up a lot so um 
I think that Selenium thing has definitely caught people's attention. It's up almost 80-90%. It is into a resistance and you can see it's going sideways. So this was a high in August, this was a high in September. So we are going sideways for now. Um, I guess when, when we see a rally this much, um, there's some sideways action, some pullback. I'd love to see a consolidation here and then hopefully next week um, we can see a push up. Um, if we get a dip below, um, then I'd look to bid some as well. A like key support, again, I'm not saying it will get there. It's probably not 0 0.01 level. Um, if it gets there, I'll look to bid some. Or if it just carries on with a breakout above not 0 0.013, I'd look to buy some Terra as well, especially with the hype that Rexy mentioned earlier. And then cap with that our meme coins. So I've had a few meme coins reach out to me and you know say, oh, you can have some allocation and all this stuff. I'm happy to support them, but I want to see something that you guys are doing as well, because I don't want to just buy token and then dump. I mean, that's not something I'll do again. I want to make money. So, you know, for marketing stuff, yeah, I'll take tokens or I'll buy it at a lower market cap, uh, work with you guys. But I want to actually see something that's going to happen with Cat with Hat. We've already had a success. You know, we around 100k market cap from when Rexy, Terra Casino started supporting it. And we've had some early investors sell, which is a bit of a problem. But it's also a good thing that those paper hands are leaving the markets. Um, other, otherwise, you know, we would have seen a lot higher move up. So people that bought at 5K, 10K, unfortunately, they've they've not even sold in different goals. They've just sold like 1K clips, which doesn't help the chart. But hopefully they're getting out. There's more burns coming. Maybe Rexy can add to that. Um, but it's holding around 100K market cap now. So hopefully we can see a push up. I really wanted to push meme coins on top of um, sort of blue chip like Juris. Um, but let's see what we can do. Anything to add to that cat with hat stuff, uh, Rexy? Yeah, I think it's been going pretty well. It's, um, as we've kind of termed it, kind of Project Moon. Um, the casino has constantly been burning over the last... Uh, last kind of two or three weeks, um, and that burn totals, you know, uh, increasing. There's significant burns going in, um, and of course, the other side to it from the um, from the token price perspective is, and you've touched on this earlier on, just burning tokens doesn't actually create price um, or price demand. Um, buying back the tokens to burn them. That's what creates the demand, and that's what the casino is doing. So, um, you know, I think there's some more profit that's being kind of assigned to that um, over the kind of coming weeks. And the, the thing is, this isn't just a one-off. It's not, you know, that for one week, cap with that was going to be bought back and sold. It's an ongoing thing. So, therefore, that's constant demand. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's um, it's working out quite well. Cool. Uh, thank you for that, Rexy. I think I've run out of things on my list. Let me just double check. I might I might need your help now. So Terraport liquid staking. So I think Rexy's been busy. I wanted to make a video on Terraport liquid staking. I'll have a catch up with Rexy next week and get that video out. We talked about Juris Alpha. Juris airdrop. So I had a message from someone. So the airdrop snapshot has been already taken. You're going to get locked airdrops tokens and I'll get Ella to explain it more. Um, you'll have like a claims portal where you can claim the tokens, the locked tokens in the future. And LL69 is also doing a, a non-locked tokens as well, the same snapshot that we took for the first drop, um, Q1 drop, you'll get those as well. Um, I'm not sure when, Elo, you can, maybe you can clarify oh, on that. Oh yeah, maybe let me that. say something about that. Um, so what was not planned uh, was that <laughs> Frag is going to vacation, blame Frag. Um, so the UI dashboard for the uh, staking, tokens like the airdrop is basically ready uh, i think we like we tested it internally and um the guys were working on it but what we didn't want to do is deploy it while he's on vacation because if there is something wrong then uh, we would have to bother him um while he's away um so we just said okay let's put it online when he's back um and like that's also going to be the date for the liquid airdrop which I'm going to sponsor out of my pocket, uh, like promised. Uh, and it's going to be based on the snapshot that was previously taken with the caveat that you have an, um, uh, how do you call this, like a whale uh, cap of um, 100 million lung staked instead of uh, 1 billion, like the original locked one. 
So uh, meaning if you have 100 million staked or 120 million, you will basically get roughly the same amount, which means smaller guys will get a little bit more and it's all liquid tokens. Um, it's not that much. I don't even remember how much I promised. I think it was 500 million in total, but I have to check. Um, so we are going to add up this, this um, to the same guys who basically got the lock drops. Um, so if you delegate it later, um, you will be not rewarded this time. Um, but I asked Frag to keep taking weekly snapshots um, at undisclosed days of the week. Um, so that maybe in future, if we do something similar again, uh, we can basically have people that were constantly delegating benefit because uh, I feel that's the most honest thing to do to always reward people that have been there as long as possible, like in the past. Um, so yeah, that's. So, so when did yeah when did you say that then? Because you know that's the main comment I get on my weekly YouTube video about Chewie's airdrop. So when did you say? Do we know rough dates? So you want to confirm that later. Uh, what do you mean? Like when it's going to be? When Frag is back from holiday? <laughs> so uh, in the next month, let's say I can just say next month, the next few. Oh months. yeah, yeah. It's going to be like uh, when we put up the staking dashboard, then we're also going to airdrop because it doesn't make sense to airdrop when people cannot really claim. You know, like uh, because if I could airdrop right now, but then everybody's going yeah. to be in your DMs and ask you, "Hey, why? Where can I claim my tokens?" And then you have to say, "Yeah, I use this uh, weird." Uh, you could technically claim them via um, you could query the contract and use the right function in your wallet and advanced tools but that's like you cannot like tell this to the average guy so we figured it's best to just wait and then airdrop for everyone which is actually good because the, now the price is higher than initially when we wanted to airdrop so um, everybody's going to get the coins they promised like uh, I never I always kept my promise so uh, you guys are going to get your airdrops um, and the other airdrops, like some people also, just to, to say this in public, some people keep asking me when airdrops. So the vesting airdrop already happened and we deployed the smart contract and you can go to the lung scan site and check it out. Um, and there you can find, I don't know where it is in the top 10 or so, there is a smart contract which is holding the 10 billion uh, jurors that were basically dropped into the contract. and. Um, now, if you're really smart on-chain detectives, you can go and watch the um, instantiate message of that contract, and then you see a receiving contract. And if you go copy-paste that address into the finder, then you end up at the, basically, uh, Frag calls it DMZ contract, which is Demilitarized Zone, uh, which is also holding a list of all receiving wallets. So whenever the vesting terms are over, the main uh, contract like the first one that is now in the top 10 is going to start distributing or releasing tokens jurors into the DMZ contract and that one has all the wallets listed from the eligible people so you can verify that it's already on chain and that you are going to receive them whenever they are uh, the vesting terms are over cool thank you mate I think that is my list guys um, we usually go overboard. Uh, we ha we do these spaces for two hours, and we always end, and we can't take questions. So, any listeners, if you have any questions, put your hand up, request to speak, and we can bring you on. Another question I get a lot is about um, holding wallets on station, and will you lose your coins? Um, I've said this a few times before. Maybe I mean we could. I don't know how we can t keep telling the same thing to people. You won't. You can still use Kepler, use um, um, is it Galaxy. It is Galaxy, isn't it? Um, the hexagon wallet. Um, you can use those um, to access as well. Your coins are on the blockchain, not on station wallet. I can see some meme coins, uh, Tokemon, uh, Cookies, Hot Lady, Turtle. If you guys want to come chill, let me know. Rexy, uh, did you want to do the Terraport um, on Wednesday on like my account or Terra Casino account or Terraport account or touch on it today or on a separate spaces? Um, I suppose because there's a little bit of both. Um, I think there's a lot to talk about with Terraport and the uh, the projects there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, in terms of the Selenium protocol that's on the launch pad at the minute. I suppose just a little bit of news about that. Um, I think the team behind it is going to be KYC'd um, sometime over the 
the coming days, if, you know, if not um, kind of weeks. So, um, also as part of that, what Terraport is doing um, is they're kind of liaising with the team to try to ensure that it's as secure as possible. Um, so that kind of gives a bit more insurance, um, and because it's such a massive kind of project as well, and um, like I say, kind of helping deliver that trilogy of um, applications for Terra Classic that was there for Luna. Um, we just think it's really important that it's as secure as possible. You know, that, I mean, that these three applications together with, you know, that's a Rejuris, it could massively turn around the ecosystem. Um, I'd be really interested to know, you know, LLL 69's, you know, view on this as well, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it just, yeah, it just seems to be so important for the future of Terra Classic. Um, that these these three work together well. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe I should have said that I forgot. Uh, it's massively bullish for the whole Terra Classic ecosystem because synthetics, um, like in combination with borrowing and lending, is very powerful. It's something that I'm doing in my. Uh, I don't want to say something wrong because I'm not sure what sort of synthetics um, selenium is going to whitelist, but if it's uh, TradFi stuff, like if there are synthetic stocks like Mirror used to do, uh, then I, I know that they want to do synthetic gold. So even that one is massive uh, because it allows you to actually um, use your yeah, TradFi stuff like gold or like stonks or whatever as collateral in DeFi lending protocols, which means uh, you have less risk of liquidation and you can participate in um, or benefit from traditional markets price increase, like Rocco said in the beginning, like usually stock markets, most of the time they go up, sometimes they go down as well, but most of the time in the last 30 years or so, they always went up long term. So you could put benefit from the price go up of uh, traditional assets and at the same time you could borrow against them and for example gamble on crypto buy more stuff um, i think that's also strategies people used a lot in the past so that's why it's called holy holy trinity right um, and uh, like obviously with crypto you could do the same but it's more interesting with stocks that's something i do with my own stock broker portfolio so i have some uh, stocks which I bought pretty cheap at the bottom. <laughs> it's mostly German dividend stocks, um, some US stocks as well. Um, and I borrowed against them and I bought Bitcoin. So, um, and right now it's working well. I don't recommend anybody to do that, but uh, <laughs> for me it works. Um, Which platform do you do that on? Um, it's a German broker. It's called uh, Finanzen Zero. Um, you can get like 50% um, they have 50% loan to value against your stocks. Um, I think with gold, it's a little bit higher, but I don't own own uh, gold there. So I have some stocks. I've t <laughs> okay, if you want to share my stock portfolio, I have tobacco stocks. I have a British American tobacco. Um, I don't even, I'm not even allowed if you're allowed to share this or whatever, like no financial advice. I don't recommend anybody to buy it, but I own them because I smoke Lucky Strike. So I thought it's fun to buy them at, uh, I think they were the 10 year low or something. So I just, put some money in um, and now I'm getting dividends on the stock. Uh, stock is going up a little bit and I used uh, the leverage to buy Bitcoin on that portfolio it was pretty far. So, yes. Interesting. Uh, that sounds really interesting. Rexy, can you say which assets they're going to have at first? Because I used to love Mirror Protocol, you know, I, that, I used to borrow an anchor. DJ long, uh, leverage long on mirror protocol on stocks are like, I used to do neutral strategies where you can short and hold the stocks. Can you elaborate more on what stocks um, or assets synthetic um, Selenium protocol is going to have? Um, I think it's going to be gold, as LL69 pointed out, and I think the other one is the US dollar. Um, I think they're the two that the, it's going to start off with. Now, I assume Okay, I say assume assumptions can be wrong, can't they? But uh, I assume it will then develop as they build up more um, kind of liquidity and, and kind of financial backing um, and expand on to other um, synthetics as well. But yeah, so gold and the US dollar, I believe, are, are going to be the first two. Uh, but Rexy, if it's US dollar synthetics, isn't it the same as Kujira's USK? Because that's like massive. It's um, If it works the same as Miro, it's usually like... Uh, it's 
it would be the same as USK or not, Rocco? Maybe you can also comment. I think he's asking you to respond to that, Rocco. Well, both of you. I don't know whoever wants to respond. Uh, like, yeah. So uh, I mean, USK was so the collateral will be Terra then, right? So USK's was over collateralized um, by Atom, BTC, ETH. Um, so it was soft pegged to the dollar, but it was backed by Atom, BTC, ETH. Um, I think it was one seventy percent. Is that how it's gonna how that US dollar is gonna work as well? Yes, I um, yeah, I think that's going to be over collateralized um, using USTC. That's my understanding. So, so no, it's not the sorry, it's not our USTC that that that's already there because that's that's not pegged to the dollar. I think it's going to use USTC as the cat collateral behind these, um, which I mean is bullish for that as well, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, you, you, I think it was kind of analysed. That's like I said um going by my understanding that in terms of the tokens that was on chain it felt that ustc was one of the more stable ones so therefore it was a good candidate for being used as the collateral to back these okay yeah i'm not sure how that's going to work so is it going to be a synthetic dollar or is it going to be ustc it's going to be a synthetic no, no dollar, gold but using USTC as the collateral. That's my understanding. I mean, that's super degen. <laughs> I like it, man. It's super cool because, like, for the first time, you have actual use case for USDC on chain, like proper use case. You yeah, know? you should tweet that, Rexy. I mean, I've not. Um, that is quite bullish. I mean, you'll have in lots of them, I mean, and people are waiting to use USTC, find a use case for USTC. So that is. That is really good. Yeah, I've been um, kind of giving the Selenium team a bit of a, well, I said the Selenium team, you know, in terms of their fan telegram group, a bit of good advice that they need to get out there more and, um, you know, actually ex explain what it is that they're actually doing and, the, you know, the pros and cons for it. Um, I actually gave them a bit of advice to kind of follow what you guys had done um, with, um, solid proof because I believe their KYC is going to be with solid proof um, if they haven't already done it. And as part of that, I believe part of the agreement that you had with solid proof was that you could do an AMA with them. And that seems to be really popular for you. And I gave them the advice look, you know what, see if you can do the same thing, um, which I think is something they're looking to do. And also, I believe that uh, Selenium as a protocol. Is going to be fully audited and i think that's going to be audited with solid proof um like i said terraports that's fully audited with certic um but i believe the selenium team wants to use solid proof um i, I assume it's probably seen as more cost effective and then something else that i think is going to be bullish about selenium is that once it's passed its audits my understanding is is that it's going to turn open source um so therefore it's going to be um you know controlled by the community as such um redline if you're if you can speak it'd be good to talk to you about this synthetic assets i know you love this rwa um synthetic assets that we had on mirror protocol um if you can speak do come on uh, david go next Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Now, I just wanted to ask a question because you know I'm uh, I'm not a target audience of, of Selenium Launchpad. However, I'm always curious who is building those tools. So uh, I'd like to ask if this Selenium Launchpad or Selenium protocol this is this is next project from Terra Civita or is it a completely different company? Some somebody that completely new to Terra Classic who is building this because. This is the information that I am missing from white paper from the website that is there, and just 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 I have just to say I've just spotted on the website on the graphics there is deposit required USCC 
So yeah, maybe it's. I mean, there was a hint on in the graphics that this will be uh, collateralized by USTC. But but I'm interested in who is building this. Uh, this tool just just to know. If anybody knows, I guess Rexis knows. <laughs> I would assume. I would, I don't need to you know. Give, I don't ask for na exact names, but is it Terra Civita or some uh, somebody completely different, different company? Can you share that, Rexy? You're on mute if you're talking. Mm, I think he rocked. Now we are alone. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, we can hear you now, Rexy. Ah, it's, um Sorry, I think um, when Dawid come on, I, I think uh, space is kind of rubbed, so I didn't hear anything he, he kind of said. Can, can you hear me right now, Rexy? Yeah, I can hear you fine. It's just, uh, yeah, it just Twitter uh, on the side. Yeah. So I, 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 can the <laughs> I can just repeat the question. I can just repeat the question. My question is, do you know if, I guess you know, if Selenium Protocol is yet another project from from Terra Civita, or is it completely uh, different comp company entity that is building it, but Terra Port is just supporting it? Can you clarify on that? Because the white paper itself, the website itself, does not give any indication who is building that. And I'm not asking about names, or you know, I don't ask you to to give exact details. But is it Terra Terra, Terra Civita project or a completely different organization company that is joining Terra Classic? Okay. Um, right. So, I suppose it's a good opportunity to kind of clear something up here, because uh, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding in terms of the part kind of Terra CV to plays plays in in a lot of this, really. So, Terra CV is more of an ethos. Okay, it's it's an idea in terms of getting people to work together and to collaborate. To deliver something um, better for Terra Classic. Okay, so Terra C Vita helps pull people together, it helps resource them, it helps um, overcome difficulties, whether that's in terms of investments, getting contracts um, passed in a legal kind of manner and all this kind of stuff. So it's, you know, in, in some ways it's kind of a bit of a bit of a kind of a launch pad type thing an investment house a vc back it does all sorts of stuff okay um but it doesn't necessarily develop directly itself okay so if you want some you know um competent devs to deliver on a project you haven't got the legal entity to be able to um actually take on those death devs with legal binding contracts then Terra C Vita can deliver that as a kind of service okay so this is why when you look at things like TerraPoint, it'll say at the bottom powered by Terra C Vita so Terra C Vita as a legal organization can do that kind of thing but Terra C Vita as a community is just people that share that kind of ethos in terms of we want to work together we want to help promote building on the chain we want to support builders and you know we'll do whatever we can to make that a success so hopefully that gives a little bit of clarity there. In terms of Selenium, uh, my understanding is that it's a group of developers that have looked at Terra Classic. They've looked at the development that's gone on in terms of TerraPort and, you know, hopefully, you know, when Juris actually um, is delivered as a protocol. And they thought, hang on, look, there's a missing link here that will really bring all this together and make it work. And we want to deliver that. Um, so the yeah, so they are a separate group. You can talk to them on the. They've got their own Telegram group, um, so you can you know speak to them directly there. Um, just that the Terraport team, as such, is trying to work with them and maybe help kind of guide and coordinate some things to ensure that what happened to Terraport ain't going to happen to to Mirror, um, and also as a responsibility to users of terraport because this 
selenium project could be so vast we want to reduce the risks that there is to investors of terraport and within the terra classic ecosystem as much as what we can um so yeah so where you can help people let's help people um and i think that's something as a, as a concept that we need to think more about there's a there's a lot goes on in this terra classic space i'm sorry not in terms of this particular kind of conversation such but why do that there seems to be a lot of people that want to point out problems with things and say this person's a fudster or i don't like that that person's built a project and it's doing well because i'm not involved so i'm gonna you know say something nasty about it rather than pointing out problems and shouting people out what maybe we should all do a bit more is think if there's a problem there how can i help that be resolved how can i turn a problem into an opportunity and a success story rather than just kind of fudding it because there's problems all over and there's problems all over the world and if you just dwell on those problems you never get anywhere if you actually help find the solutions and help deliver them solutions then that makes for success and terra classic can be a success if we all actually get together identify what the problems are and push for the solutions and then solutions might not be perfect so if you think what tech did with cmc just earlier or last week whenever it was he saw a problem and he tried to do something about it and he was successful he managed to get them socials updated now the fact that there might have been somebody that didn't quite agree that the ones that tfl chose from the ones that was they were signposted to maybe didn't fit you know their desire um you know that's it didn't fit my desire i mean i i, I ripped tech and they were arsehole in terms of you know me kind of complaining to him i said ow what you know why on earth have you done this it's just going to cause such an uproar across territory as the validators will just go in spare about it um but then i can and i you know i had to put my phone down <laughs> phone down for a few hours and go to the gym because i thought i'm really getting a bit stressed about this i, I couldn't believe what he'd done but then you know after i'd kind of let a bit of sweat out in the gym and i'd kind of calmed down and i'd looked at things more productively let's say and i'd evaluated where we'd been and what this new development did or action did i thought well actually it's put us in a better position so i then thought look you know and it's something that you know vegas has said before and because vegas wasn't part of this decision to make the telegram that he founded the one that was on cmc that was something tech had done he presented a number of webs um, a number of telegram groups his was one one that i'd kind of founded terra cv to community that was another um and as vegas pointed out you know if somebody was going to complain about this really it'll be me that complains about it because the group that i kind of founded wasn't the one that was on the list but for me I kind of thought, what is the what is the more important thing here? Is the more important thing having your own Telegram group that's signposted for CMC, or is it more important that we've got a Telegram group, whoever is whoever it is, is signposted to, and so that people out there that have no idea what's going on in Terra Classic have got somewhere to go. And for me, that was the more important thing. And that's why I thought, well, rather than complaining, because everybody can complain, why not work together with people to try to build success where maybe the, you know, there wasn't success before. Um, so, I, I, you know, it's, I, it's very rare that I actually get involved with the, you know, politi politics and shenanigans that, you know, go on on Twitter. Um, or x if you like but just last these last few days and this last week it's something i have got involved in because um i thought it was a massive massive detriment to the to terra classic those socials being took off cmc i think it exposed us to massive risks that was unneeded and what could have been a far better solution would be kept the socials on cmc as they were and just have another proposal that went through governance where people either validated that particular telegram being on there or they produced some you know another telegram and that was agreed that that could then um replace it 
uh, or as Vegas had kind of offered, you know, somebody else can take over his, his telegram and be the owner of it, you know. Um, yeah, so there you go. Okay, thanks for that, Rex. I mean, I'm happy to talk about Selenium because I used Mirror Protocol a lot before. I've just got the docs up here. Um, yeah, you're right. So you can use USTC um, to mint the assets and it's it's 150% um collateral premium so it is a bit dj and i believe mirror was 150 percent as well but other ethereum projects i think like um synthetics and what's it called is it synthetic cnx i think the token is they used to have 300 or 600 percent collateral so i love the dj aspect of it and i'm glad that it gives uscc a use case rexy so i'm i've not spoken to the team personally but if they can deliver it it could be amazing and um I'm sure LL69 and myself would be happy to do a spaces with, with the team, ideally. Are they English speaking? I don't know, or not English speaking. Can they communicate in English to do a spaces? Um, I'm not sure, because I'm not sure who the actual members are as such. Um, but I, yeah, so I, I don't know. Um, is there a simple answer to that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I know from the Terraport team, Man is working close with them. Like I say, from a security perspective, and just to you know, try to make things go smoothly, and it's you know it's really fantastic that they decided that um, that one of the um, one of the activities that you can carry out to get yourself you know some selenium in advance of it um, kind of launching was through buying Terra and kind of burning it, and that's one reason why that's kind of affected the price. So you know if that kind of carries on for the next what. 30 or 40 days um hopefully that will help recover the terror price to the um to what it was at the kind of pre-sales point um so you know it could get up to what was that um i forget what what, what price is it at the minute i think it's at 1.2 cents so if that can actually get the price back up to kind of four cents which i think was what the pre-sale was um you know that would be superb for that as well and of course it you know it brings in volume not just for um terra and um but also for all the projects are on terraport as well um because you know once you've kind of you know created a bit of a profit and you decide to sell then you're going to want to buy something else with it and you either buy lunk um and then you know you're subject to the volatility of lunk or you can look at the various kind of you know um opportunities that are there in terms of the other kind of tokens on the ecosystem whether it's juris cat with hat tkm you know food frg whatever it may be um so yeah um the more volume the better yeah no i'm like i said i'm quite excited maybe again i need someone to vouch for the team because if i'm shilling them on to make sure it's a solid team as well um but maybe i'll chat to them in the telegram i'll check out the telegram tomorrow because there could be even from a content creating youtube point of view i could make videos of you know depositing funds on juries borrowing from juries then using the borrowed amounts to um long some gold mint some gold there's lots of cool stuff you can do and and that's what gets people on chain which is um bullish for luna classic long term Guys, we're coming to the end of the spaces. K Rax and David, do you guys want to add anything? I just want to say one sentence. I think this this Selenium protocol can be bullish. I'm not a technical guy, but I think it can be very bullish if all all that you are saying about can become true. But I just hope that uh, people behind Selenium protocol will follow LL's path, uh, that they will create a legal company KYB and will be professional in, in these terms also, because this is what, for people like me, from, you know, people who take care about not just, uh, just the results, but being professional in all aspects, I hope that they will follow the suit and they will show the world that it's yet second or third or another real business that it's building on Terracathic. So I hope that they will do it and not just deliver the product, but also be fully professional and legal, etc. So my hope for this. Yeah, I mean, if I can respond to that, um, I fully understand what you're saying, and I think there's, I think there's things that you've got to consider with this. Is that um, my understanding is, is that they want to be legally compliant, um, as Terraport does, as Juris does, as you know. I'd like to think, you know, all projects on Terra Classic would be. Um, however. 
you've also got to take into account that Terra Classic is decentralized or, or supposedly decentralized, not just in terms of governance, but in terms of legal standing. And once you start building companies that are registered within the traditional world, then you're creating a centralized single point of failure in terms of compliance risk and in terms of the um, general um, approach that seems to be in some jurisdictions around the world of in, um, enforcement based compliance. Um, so I think an organization can be professional but not necessarily registered as a company in the traditional world um and like i say i don't know selenium, selenium's approach to this um but like i say there's risks um there's risks associated with that as i did say earlier on my understanding is is that when selenium becomes after it's audited and it becomes launched i think it's then going to turn open source which is absolutely fantastic then it? because once it's become open source then you know anybody can work on it and work with it and you know help take it to the next step um and with it being open source then you know it's that i guess from a risk perspective that's maybe lower risk than what's actually having a um a traditional registered company kind of approach could be because just because you've got a traditional company um or a traditional company structure it doesn't mean that you're solid and stable i mean you know most businesses fail um i think the last data that i saw on this is something like nine out of ten businesses will fail um in the real world in the traditional world you might say um you know just registering a company isn't doesn't mean that you're going to have automatic success um, so yeah, so you know, it's I understand what you're saying, and hopefully it'll be a solid business. It'll be secure, um, and it'll be robust, and it'll really help recover Terra Classic. But the method that they take to ensure that robustness, I guess, you know, it, it's for them to decide. I get your point, and this, this is something that applies for me, right? That I, my, I personally, you know, treat it seriously when the, there is real business behind. And real professional people don't that you can check, right? But for for some degens, it may not be an issue or not not, not a deal at all. So I get it. This is just my opinion, my idea, and not everybody needs to share that, right? Yeah. So like I said, I mean, I don't know who the devs are, but my understanding is is that they are a dev team in the real world that have got a real world company. I don't know what it is. Um, it's quite honest i'm not asked the question um i'm just, i'm just more interested in what they're actually delivering and trying to um you know remove any kind of barriers to that not being a success um but yeah uh i yeah it's i, I mean i'm more for on a personal perspective i like to hear the voice of people um and i do I like to see the face of people and the kind of projects that i get behind most are those where i can pick up the phone and i can call that person um or i can go around their house um although you know I, <laughs> i've not got international travel in the in the back garden um but you know the, the more transparency the better from my perspective um and this is why sometimes you'll see maybe new kind of maybe token type projects come out that maybe get quite a bit of backing but I, I might provide a little bit of information about them, but you know i maybe not seem to back them too much and that's because if i can't see the color of your eyes i'm a little bit nervous particularly after what happened with with terraport um and it could be that somebody's really legitimate but that's they just want that um you know privacy which i can fully understand um and i'm you know despite i seem to spend quite a bit of time on you know social media and these kind of spaces and you know i'm I'm completely you know um kind of doxxed i'm not really a social media junkie i'm quite a kind of private kind of person really um so you know it's i guess it's horses for courses cool 
Thank you, Rexy. Uh, KRX, thanks for joining today. Do you want to say anything else today? Yeah, um, I had left before because uh, I couldn't hear Rexy's. And then uh, when I came back in, it seemed like there was in a different topic of conversation. And then when I got put on the speaker panel, it was a completely different topic of conversation. So I'm not sure what was the most recent thing that was being talked about. Uh, Rexy's, if you could clarify, um, right before you were talking about Selenium, uh, could were you talking about the CMC links and um, Peck and what he did? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I can maybe digress a bit, and I apologize for that. But um, yeah, yeah it, I mean that's okay. I, I have a point that I can actually uh, make on that because I might have some knowledge that most people probably won't have. Um, I kind of think I know about why uh, those oh. links were chose. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, sorry for just pointing in those. My complaint wasn't against tech. I think tech just tried to do the the best that he could do. And, no, no, um, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to add on to that. Um, so uh, I don't think that Neo Damon uh, or Tech, however you want to call him, had any nefarious uh, activities or uh, reasons to be doing that. I think he wanted to actually help the Terra Classic chain. Um, and it was TFL that gave the links to CMC for the changes. And people are wondering why it was TFL chose the links that they did. So I have been around in the Terra Classic community for, you know, two and a half years. I have worked behind the scenes of, you know, TR and a lot of other spaces and stuff like that. I've also have been very active, um, relatively speaking, in TFL discords before they were put on read only because the admins and the devs have completely abandoned those spaces and so there was a lot of people that were from the terror classic community that were holders that were going into the tfl discords asking for help on what they should do and it was um me and uh, quite a few other people that were in the community uh, that were uh, helping a lot of these people with what was going on because essentially they had been abandoned and um i had and once again there was only a couple different spaces during that time when they made all those um discords and telegrams read only and those spaces was the um tr uh discord or terrarium uh that it was originally uh eventually was changed to the validator discord and uh the telegram and then uh t uh tcv uh discord and telegram and just a couple other links on there and the people that were in those spaces helping all of those people were connected into the tcv and the old TR uh, and uh, other spaces in the telegram. So those were the spaces that they actually knew. And um, they needed somebody, they needed a space to be able to send classic because they didn't want people to be talking about Terra Classic in their spaces. So they needed a place where they could send those people. And since they were in those public spaces, then those were the spaces that they used. And so they used those links for the CMC. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And um, and how they originally came up with these particular kind of telegram groups and discords and, and spaces, as you put it, is um, I can remember having the conversation with TFL and at this particular point when they was chosen, um, I'd got a pretty good relationship with TFL. Um, I think at that particular point, I was working with all nodes to, and kind of the go between and coordinate all this kind of stuff to create the endpoints and the infrastructure because there's a lot of concern about TFL having it pulled. Um, 
and I'd got an agreement with all nodes to kind of um, kind of create this as well. So at that time, because we was testing the infrastructure and was using station as the the testing um, kind of load mechanism, um, you know, I was having regular kind of discussions with them to check how that was kind of going. And as part of this, it became apparent that TFL wanted to sign post to new um, groups, if you like. And I was asked, you know, to come up with a list of what I thought was probably the most um, kind of popular um, or the bigger kind of groups on Terra Classic. And yeah, I mean, I could have turned around and said, just use TCV, really. Um, you know, that's the main one. And I could have just really gone for that. But I thought, no, the right thing is to cover a, as wide a, as wide a representation of Terra Classic as a community as possible. So the ones that pretty much appeared on the Terra C Money Twitter um, kind of feed, I think, were the ones that I kind of suggested to TFL that I thought would be pretty good. And I didn't have a very good relationship with, um, I didn't have a very good relationship with TR at that particular point or Terrarium as that particular discord became known or even Vegas. I mean, you know, it's, um, you know, I certainly wouldn't say that it was twins <laughs> at that point, but I thought you've got to look at the community and you've got to look at providing solutions that's the best for the community, not what's best for you. And that's why I came up with that list. So yeah, there was the Terrarium, it's called Terra Rebels Discord at that time. There's Vegas's Telegram group. Um, yeah, and, and so on, as well as Terra CB. Yeah, I mean, I, I doubt that they would have um, only chosen just TCB because uh, TR, also he known as Hexagon, now after the rebranding, um, was working with um, TFL at the time to run stress tests on the infrastructure that had been built out to make sure that it can uh, handle the load. I think this happened just before that because, um, and at that point, when Station had had some issues that had gone uh, gone on there, I, the infrastructure. Um, Terra Rebels hadn't got the infrastructure in place at that time. And oh, those conversations had been happening for, you know, long before those stress tests because they knew when, uh, long before that time, that they, uh, what, Terra Rebels, I'm just going to call it that, was creating the Rebel Station and building out a complete infrastructure that was independent of anything of TFL. And then they needed to make sure that um, it could handle the load. Yeah, when these were picked, it was before um, before Terra Rebels was even building any infrastructure. It happened quite some time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's more like highlighting the um, relationship that uh, TR and a lot of the people that were working back then that had with TF TFL because... They had to. We had to. Okay. Thanks for that conversation, Kerax and Rexy. Um, we are running a bit over time, um, so I'll have to run the spaces up now. Hello, 6 9 do you want to add anything about Luna Classic, Juris, or anything else? Um, no, I think uh, for now it's good. We're building. Uh, everything is going fine, I think, just a little bit slow, uh, but better slow than... Uh... Uh, or better safe than sorry, right? So. Um... I think for now everything is going fine, and if there is anything uh, 
to say like uh, we always have been transparent so if there are real issues then I would I would come forward personally and tell the community that hey we have issues here and there but now there are no real issues we're just waiting for stuff to fall into place um, so I'm looking forward to possibly be able to update you guys end of next week after having the meeting with SolidProof uh, probably when the break is back from holiday. we're going to discuss some internal stuff about actual development uh, how we're going to approach it we possibly are going to start talking to the uh, development company that made the original quote uh, if we get a go from solid proof that we can already start negotiating again and by getting back in contact um, i want to talk to the lead dev and when all of that stuff happened, um, I will be able to update you guys. But right now, there is not really much to say. So just stay patient. We're building in the background. K is helping me to stay focused and get the task together. And hopefully, um, I can make an announcement next week about my personal situation to be able to spend way more time on the project and uh, actually steer and lead things better. Awesome. Thanks for that lunatic. Well, thank you again for everyone tuning in and listening. If you enjoyed it, do like and retweet. We do these spaces every week. However, I am away on Sunday, so I'll speak to lunatic. Uh, we could do it on another day or skip it. Uh, maybe we just push it back to Monday and then I'll let you guys know. There is another spaces Rexy wanted to do about Terraport. So On Wednesday, I'll of DM Rexy, so I'll talk to him on Wednesday. There might be a Terraport specific spaces on Terraport account or my account with Bleeves.
so that could be coming up as well I do a weekly youtube video as well i try to summarize all the conversation into seven ten minute to let you guys know on a shorter format and if you love luna classic you like listening to us you could listen to these spaces the longer format and hopefully come up come up and ask us questions and talk as well we don't always have to talk technical luna classic we could talk to you about rexy's fighting lunatic smoking weed or my love for tigers anyways guys thank you and i'll speak to you guys next week good night